Today, I'm going to talk about multicolored LED matrices. And these are two examples. This is the Arduino shield that I designed, and this is a commercial example that you can buy from a place that sells electronic components. And before I get into the schematic of a device like this, I'm gonna do a brief introduction to what's going on in a single LED like this guy. So one of these, or actually one of these single dots. And in that, you have something that looks like this, where there's a, a set of four pins, and one of those pins, or one of those pairs of pins, there'll be a common ground, or a common high voltage, and one of those pins will control the blue LED, one of those pins will control the green LED, and one of those pins will control the red LED. And if you have a two-color system or a four-colored system, then there'll be more pins, one for white, or you'll be missing the blue, the green, or the red. But conceptually, it's the same. So each package is basically, in my case, a set of three LEDs. So then when you start looking at your schematic for your matrix, it will look something like this. And here I've labeled the different colors. So each one of these LEDs is actually a group of these LEDs. So in that case, this is the one that's labeled A5 and pins three through five. So it's this guy is that one. And just like in a single color LED matrix, you need to add a resistor to each one of these. So the resistor in this case is always gonna go on the pin that controls a specific color of LED and not on the common pin. And that's because each color of LED may require a different size resistor in order to make the LED colors seem like they're equal brightness. And that will depend on the LED type and it will also depend on the voltage that you're running through the system. So in my case, on my shield, I label this RA, the green ones RB, and the red ones are C. And you're gonna have one of each of those types on each of the pins, like this. Okay, and then in order to make it look like all of the LEDs are on at a given time, we basically only control one of these rows. And you don't wanna do it by controlling the column because then the color or the brightness of each one of these LEDs is going to vary based on how many of these LEDs need to be on at a given time. But if we go row by row instead of column by column, then because only one or zero LEDs are on, then each resistor is only used by a maximum of one LED, so they'll always look like they're the same brightness. And so in this case, this is gonna be low in order for an LED to be on, and then the desired LED combination will be high. So for example, if you wanted a red row, then this would be high, this would be high, this would be high, and this would be high and the rest of these would be set to low. If we wanted it to look purple, then we would set all of these to high, leaving the greens at low. And if we wanted all of them to look white, for example, then we set it all to high, and this to low again. And we go through cycling, just like we did for a single color matrix, and through the persistence of vision, if you do that cycling fast enough, then it will appear like all of these are on and we can control every one of their colors 
based on these properties, or based on which ones we select to be high or low at a given time. So I hope that explains how this works and how you would control them when you're doing some kind of electronic device or allow you to write programs easily for the shield that I made.